Hey guys, welcome back. Who wants to weld some dropouts? I know you do. I do. Let's do it. In this video, that is uh, what we'll be doing. <laughs> Welding the dropouts to the chain stays. I am not drunk, I swear. I'm just, uh, you know, maybe I am drunk with excitement. Tack welding? Whoops! Um, here it is in slow motion. Uh, there was nothing holding the chainstay on, and when the heat heated up the chainstay, it just fell right out. So, uh, just the, the fit of the chainstay was holding holding it on there. So I tied it on with a piece of leather and uh, used the chainstay rest. And tacking up the chainstays. Alright, little sooty. You think that's sooty though? Uh, wait till a little later in the video. I really get my suit on later. <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's see, what am I doing here? I gotta uh, turn this thing around because I can't really access the chainstays from below. Uh, not in an easy, convenient way. So I'm actually almost dropping my jig on the floor. I'm trying to uh, prop it up so that I can get to the bottom of the chainstay, so I'm like trying all this stuff and it's not working out. It's it's not steady. So I decided to um, pull it off the stand. And I'm gonna turn it around and then mount it back on the stand upside down. Alright, here it is, all mounted upside down, and you can see now I can get to those dropouts and fill that pretty big gap there. Alright, so I'm going to drop a tack on either side, and I'm actually going to put three tacks on the bottom for each chainstay. And uh, I didn't do that on the top because I wanted to, um, I didn't want it to pull. So I just put one on the top. And what I'll do is, after I'm done, done with this, I'll take the chain stays off. And then I will put two more tacks back on the top. There it is. Oh, soot. Lots of soot. Chim chiminy, chim chiminy, chim chim charu. I does what I like and I likes what I do. Alright, let's get these chain stays off. And I'm gonna mount it up here in the in that welding arm thing I have. And so what I need to do is I need to put um two tacks on the top, one here and here. All right, so now with that all tacked up, I will tack this little cap on here. If you watched uh, my earlier practice video on this subject, you might remember I did this step first. I've since realized it's best to do it later with the dropout already tacked into the chainstay. Uh, with the dropout on there, it gives the heat a place to go, so it's less likely to burn up the uh, thin wall tubing. You guys may have noticed I've been using a different torch. Uh, this is my custom short handle torch made from a WP9 China import. 
Here you can see my old torch and on the new torch I'm rocking a number 12 cup and a cheapo number 12 cup. Um, so I've been messing around with this setup and I like it a lot. If I decided to stick with this I'll probably upgrade the cup. Pulse settings. Okay here's the pulse settings I'm using to weld the caps on. And something I noticed on this machine, if you turn pulse on, the amps readout displays the amount of background current amps. And to test this out, uh, I turn the background current knob and you can see the amperage change on the display. So that's kind of cool, but I never use that. Alright, I'm running about 18 CFH and I'm purging at around 5 CFH. And a happy little accident, that hole I put on the chainstay, uh, the hose fit right into it. So, that was nice. It's nice when things like that happen. Alright, so there I go, I just welded that on there and, you know, I didn't really need to use pulse and in the future I don't think I will. I got a little hole there. Uh, it's just not necessary think. Alright, so um, I'm going to fill this up. I'm going to try to run a single weld right across that hole and uh, I'm going to put a little piece of uh, a little cut off in there to help fill it. And uh, my pulse settings, I'm actually turning pulse off and from here on out I will not be using pulse. So here I go, I'm uh, just welding right across and I'm using around uh, 65 amps. And wow, lots of sparks coming out at the end there. And I think that was because, uh, I'm actually not sure, I think the purge was too high and it was like blowing air out. So when I got to the end it was like plugging up the hole. And that's why it started sparking out like that, I think. I don't really know. So uh, I'm cleaning it up and yeah, steel is very forgiving. It I'm going to run another uh, weld across that. So here I go. Cha-chang. All right, there it is. Good enough. Oh, you'll notice I had foil wrapped around it. That was like my paranoia trying to like shield any breeze and I was pretty much paranoid the rest of these wells I was putting foil around everything and I really didn't need to do that as I found out later you'll see that later in the video all right so uh, I'm welding I'm actually finishing the weld just then I finished the weld on the cap it wasn't extending all the way and now I'm welding the the chain stay. Sparks. You guys are gonna start calling me Sparky. I just know it. <laughs> Alright, there it is. Not too bad. And uh, the other side. Turn it around. Yeah, I should be moving faster. Yeah! Uh, this caused a lot of trouble. You can see like sparks. I kept having to clean it and restart and I was like changing my settings around like what is causing this? And it got way out of control. So I finally figured out the problem. Uh, there's a little setting on your welder, on most welders, called pre-flow. And my pre-flow was set too low. So I turned it up. And, uh, that spark just th just then, that was uh, just me dipping my tungsten into the puddle. I do that once in a while. Um, yeah, so once I turned the pre-flow up, everything was fine from there on out. It just needed a little more shielding ahead of time before the spark initiated. And it didn't have that problem before, but I think what was going on is like, sometimes it just gets finicky, especially with small round tubing. I, I think, 
I'm not positive, you may need a little more uh, pre-flow. All right, almost uh, done here. All right, there it is, done. And here's the other chainstay. I did this one off camera. I didn't want to put you guys through all that misery again. Although this one went a lot better. You can see there's a visible difference that this one uh, just came out a little better. Which makes sense. Okay guys, that's a wrap. We are getting closer and closer. If you're new and enjoyed this video, please subscribe. In the next video, we will weld these chain stays to the bottom bracket and dun dun dun. We'll put the wheel on and see if it's straight. I hope it's straight. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Can't wait. Okay, guys, thanks for watching and see you later.